Oh my gosh, it looks so creepy. Hey, I want to say congratulations. Hey guys, it's the little pickle here, and I am back. Quarantine, excuse the crappiness. We are allowed to look like crap during this time. So, I just wanted to do a sit down, do a chit chat, you know. I got my milk over here, my bread with eggs. I just got done bathing after I did my exercise for the day. So basically, as you can see by the title of this video, it's called. What's it called again? Oh, it's called Good Vibes 2020. So basically, I am a huge fan of Corey Kenshin. He's this really cool black YouTuber, you know. Power to the people. I will. Put a link to his channel down in my description below go follow him like you want to get it all he recently did a video called good vibes 2020 as you know like 2020 has just been a crappy year with everything that's going on around and he was like for a moment let's just forget about all the crappy things just because we're forgetting about it for a moment doesn't mean that we don't acknowledge it but for this moment we're just going to recap oh my god i don't know my hands are so i'm like just, just so my hands are just so long, you know, tall, tall people. It's just a thing. Anyone's getting sidetracked. So yeah, he basically was like, let's think about all the good thing that has happened to us this year. Hence the title, Good Vibes 2020. So I'm gonna take on the challenge because he was like, at the end of the video, he was like, comment down below all your good vibes inside one particular video. So. Today's video is going to be called Good Vibes with the Little Pico. Yeah, and I'm just going to think about all the good things that happened so far in 2020. You know, the year's been crappy. Yeah, and don't be shy, you guys as well. Comment down below your Good Vibes 2020. I even like make a video about it, you know? This is quarantine. We have so much time on our hands. Like, excuse me, I'm sitting on the suitcase and my dad's suitcase. Oh my gosh. I'm not, I don't want to break this thing, but like, yeah. Let me just adjust. Man, it's just, you can't even see my hair. Let me just fix my thing. Yeah, we're back. So, like, yeah, comment down below as well. You're. Good vibes 2020 list, you know what's been happening to you guys. And I'm gonna pop, you know what? What should I start with? Let me just eat before I get into this here. I started opening it yesterday, I only got like a few left. But like, yeah. Good vibes 2020. So, good vibes. What has been good? No, I just. What has been good for me? Oh my gosh, my lips are so ashy. And yeah. What has been good for me is yeah. That's what. Um, one good thing is that. 
my family will be going next month my mom will be giving birth so to her last child she said she this is going to be her last baby she's giving birth to the sixth member of this family so it's my mom my dad me my sister Jimana, my sister daddy and then the baby that's coming next month so it's gonna be six it's gonna be a family of six so that's the first good thing another family member basically um, another good thing about 2020 is that you know everything shut down even you know, the churches so my relationship with god has grown stronger which is a good thing you know so far and so like every day at like 9 p no 7 p.m um a few members from the church and like family members all over the world we are in this group at facebook and we get together and we have like a whole prayer session and that's nice oh my god those two guys are going to be telling me i'm making for but yeah, so of them, yeah, she's up with God, it's going strong. It's amazing. Third thing is that, oh yeah, my whole fitness journey, it took a whole pandemic, like a whole quarantine, whole COVID-19 situation for me to get my fitness life back. <laughs> It's not like I was extremely unfit before. I wasn't like fat or anything like that. It's just that I've always been an active child. Like first grade until seventh grade. I did tracks. And um, it's basically mandatory for everyone in South Africa. Like we all do that. And then in grade eight and until grade nine. When I went to high school, so until Central High School, I did swimming. So I was always active, but ever since I came here to take older, I haven't been active because like, the only thing that kept me active was basically PE class, which is physical education. And that doesn't really do anything, but like, yeah, I've been doing the Chloe thing workout. I started on May 15th. Like, I share my whole journey and progress on my instagram so make sure to follow that make sure to follow as the little people <laughs> yeah and it's it's cool i've been i started may 15th so that's like three months already right may june july this is like two months and a half where i'm going to swim yeah i think like really cool i'm happy with my results so that's the fourth thing no, that's the third thing. First was a new family member. Second relationship with God has grown stronger. And third is oh yeah, my fitness life. And then the fourth line for me since I have so much stuff for myself, I've been able to get back on my YouTube channel and focus on it. More specifically my gaming channel, which is Cape Town and Go. Go to go subscribe to it. I'll leave a link in my description below. But like yeah, I've been playing games like I remember one of the first videos I did on my that channel of mine like three years ago when I started three years ago was a Cinderman channel um Cinderman video and I was like guys I'll be back with the other part. They don't even know that three years later I came back with the second part. Like hey at least I came out with it. See so, yeah, it was so funny. I was I was like you know in the video I was like you know what. I don't think I'm scared of Cinderman anymore than I get the first jump scared and I was like uh uh I'm so scared of this dude so like yeah go check my gaming channel also but like yeah so the fourth one is more free time to be able to focus on my YouTube channel and also I started my Minecraft because I always wanted to put um, input Minecraft into my gaming channel and I was finally able to do that so I did my one life slash hardcore mode of challenge on Minecraft, which was like so fun. So they completed, but like yeah, you can check it. And now currently, I am busy 
with a new game series which is called like Minecraft Minecraft Life where I'm basically on this I found this island and I basically inhabited it and what I want to do is turn the whole island into my own island so I currently have like my base my house my farm area and my storage unit so like yeah and I made I built like this whole bridge that's connecting my island to like the mainland so that I can like birch land basically so I can explore and like maneuver animals and like, resources and mines and all those stuff so it's pretty cool you can go check it out as well and what else so I have four things already new family member relationship with God um, fitness journey and Minecraft and the first one is more time to read books because if you didn't know I'm a bookworm like I love books Oh my gosh, I cannot get enough. But like, I at this moment I'm taking a little break from books. But like, I'm gonna hop back into it because I remember at the beginning of this year, like when um, COVID hit really hard and we had no more school, I was reading books so much. Like I was, especially my app. I have books in um, like downloaded on my books app, which is like an app that you get on your iPhone and on Wattpad also. Like I'm. I follow this creator on there, his name is Rob Thayer and he has this whole um, series which is, what's it called, the, the one that I'm reading now is Storm Bells or something like that and oh my gosh, like I'm getting my family members, my cousins hooked on this book, my friends back to South Africa hooked on this book because like this book series is so nice, like when I tell you it's so nice, I finished because when I took, because I was reading that book for so long like I was reading that book so fast that um, when I went when I stopped at the final book at that time which was like I think the fifth book because there's eight series there is eight like this whole sub book series has nine or eight books total I think it's eight books or nine yeah and I'm like one of those numbers and while I was reading it I think it was last year yeah last year I got to the fifth book and that was his final book because the way Wattpad um, works is that the writer writes the book and then when he stops it's like to be continued so they will inform you once the book is the next uh, book is out again and so I was like oh my gosh I don't have anything to do so I left Wattpad for a while and then when I went back into Wattpad I found out that he added four more books four or three more books and I was like oh my gosh I have to read this so I finished two books yeah two books in like half a month like imagine and like each book had like oh my gosh each book had like 49 to 50 chapters so imagine i was just like going through the book because it was so it's so good like i will leave a link in my i think i can link the book here yeah, i'll leave it in my um description below so like he also um, turns it into hard copy so i'll leave a link to like the amazon link where you can find get the books as well because that book is so good but like you know i'm i'm currently at the last book and so i'm taking my time with it because you know when your book um book nostalgia is a real thing is that once you're done reading a book that's amazing you just sit there and you're like what what am i gonna do with my life now because you become so invested in a book that you like when it's done you're like oh my gosh what am i gonna do like i remember the book that really did that for me was um jane by april linda which is another good book and the circle um trilogy by neil roberts like oh my god that book is so good that i downloaded the book again onto my books app and i'm gonna read it for the second time like i got introduced um to that book when i was studying in when I was studying in San Susi Girls High School back when I was home in South Africa because we had a whole library there with amazing books and my friend Mila I hope they all do good like I miss all of them Mila she introduced me to this book I was like you know what I just got done reading one book I forgot what the name of the book was I think it was like the Fallen series and I was like Mila could you recommend a good book to me and she was like girl I got a thing for you she introduced me to the Circle Trilogy but I only finished reading the first book and I didn't get, get to read the rest because that year was my last year at Sonsus unfortunately and then that year I moved to Angola where I currently am 
So I was, uh, that book was always in the back of my head because I didn't get to finish it. I only uh, read the first book and there was like two more books left. So then when I found the, the other books and I was reading it, I was like, oh my gosh. Smila was right. This book is fantastic. So like, yeah. The first thing, a uh, good um, vibe about 2020 is that I actually got more time to read books. Yeah. And on my whole book app, you can set a goal as to how many books you want to be able you want to read a year. And I have mine set on four. I currently read two books this year compared to last year where I read like eight. Where I read like, no, I read seven books. So seven plus this two. No, I read eight books. Yeah, last year I read eight books. So then eight plus this two equals ten. So that's how you can see. I'm like a oh, bookworm. Like I'm obsessed with books. But like, yeah, I'm currently reading... Um, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which is like an amazing book. I thought like when I read that book, it was gonna be like old language, you know, Shakespearean, even though it does, because I downloaded the old version instead of the enhanced version. So they still use old and day terms, whereas like, you know, the word gay meant happy, whereas nowadays the word gay refers to a, a person with a sexual preference for the same sex, basically, yeah. So like yeah, and it's like really nice. Like Jane Austen, she was ahead of her time because Pride and Prejudice, even though it's in the back, or like back in the days, you know, the male always had the upper hand, like the situation that they're currently in. Like the like the aunt just like trying to get them out there to marry people, but like the way Jam, the main character, who is her name is Elizabeth, right? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. I didn't need it. I'm, I'm still like in the book. It's been like two days since I haven't touched the book again. So like, yeah, I think it's Elizabeth. Elizabeth, that's me. She's the second born. The first born was oh my gosh, I forgot the name. But like, yeah, the first born. She's you know she's what you call this. She's so sweet. That's what I'm gonna say. I can say she's sweet. She's a little bit empty headed, you know. She's all about seeing the green, the people, you know. Like, oh, I just love everyone. And then you have Elizabeth, the second born, where she's like, I don't give a damn about a man. Like, mm -mm, you're not gonna tell me what to do. Like, I'm not gonna fall for anyone. And then she falls for somebody, and then it's like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna spoil the book. I'm just gonna say it's a good book. You should definitely go check it out. So, like, yeah, as you can see, no problem. I'm even smiling while talking about books. That's how happy I am about books. But like yeah, if any of you have like um, book suggestions for me, like books I should check out, comment down below because I really love reading books. And like yeah, I mentioned a few, so all the books that I've mentioned, I'll link it down below so that you guys can read it. Yeah. Um, what else? I really have five things on my good vibes list. What's in there? I'm not eating. I'm just talking. Um, what's in the up? Hmm. Hmm. Is it only five things? Oh, I know what another thing is. Just the sixth thing is having more time to do good into this world. So, so now it's quite a few time. Lots of people aren't working, especially here in Angola. There's a lot of families that I need in this time. So, me and a bunch of my friends, we started a non-profit uh, uh, organization called Project Golden Heart, which in English is Project um, Project Golden Heart. And the objective of this um, organization is to help those families who are in need. And how we help is by basically with the donations that people give us, whether it's money or like food, like rice, oil, beans, etc., we will choose a day every in every end of the month. We will choose a specific day. We will go out into an area where people are really suffering, and we'll distribute food. Since we are still new, we are gonna start by feeding out the people, and as we grow and as our donation, like you know. Get, as we get more donations and we gain popularity, we will um, implement basket like necessity baskets. We will have um, 
rice, beans, salt, sugar, um, what else? I mean, chicken, soap, masks, because you know it's quarantine time, it's a pandemic, so we need masks. Um, cheek, yeah, and um, Omo, you know, to wash clothes and you know, keep yourself protected during this time. So, like, yeah, I started a, we used, not only me, but you know, a group of us, we started a non profit organization called Project Golden Heart. And I want you to follow, I'll leave the name, like the name of our Instagram and our Facebook page so that you guys can go give a like and follow to support us. And I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys because I really do want to help people out during this time. So like, yeah, the sixth thing is, I'm in a non-profit organization. So like, that's cool. And the seventh thing is, I've also been having time to help uh, with all of the injustice that's happening right now, you know, all the injustice that's happening towards black people, you know, people of color, you can see, I'm definitely that they're black <laughs> myself. And so, I've been doing my deed by signing petitions, you know, spreading the word, sharing black owned businesses on Twitter and on Instagram. So be sure to follow me there. I'll leave a link to my Twitter down in the description below and here's my Twitter handle it's like yeah I've been doing my part and another way you can do your another way I've been doing my part is by watching documentaries on Netflix like I already watch a, a documentary that I encourage you guys to watch is when when they see us 13th and the uh, Caliph oh my gosh let me before I butcher this out you know let me just check because I don't want to hate comments in the section saying you're not cultured on the situation. Let me just open this map over here. Oh. Watch when they see us. 13th and the story of Khalif Burda. Like, I watched when they see us when it came out. When Ava DuVernay produced it and it freshly came out on Netflix. I don't watch it right away. I watched it like two weeks after. Because when I was reading what people were saying on Twitter, they were like, when you watch it, you will get in your feels. And like, I definitely did. After I watched that, like, scene, it's only like four episodes, and each episode is an hour long, and each episode talks about a different time in, in, this, in this documentary, in the story, and what happens. It's just two stories. So each episode talks about different times. So the first episode is like, when the crime occurred and when the police were doing an investigation the second episode was the interrogation and the trial for the children and then the third episode was when they were all in prison and basically all in prison and um Corey Wise's story and then the fourth episode was life after they came out of prison and they are exam their case to be exonerated basically and oh my gosh when i watched that documentary i also I finished watching that documentary i was just like damn we black people really do suffer like the world is so against us like people always talk about oh you know colonization was a long time ago slavery was a long time ago but you still see the effects of it today like take congo for example congo is a beautiful country the most of the stuff that we need in our gadgets phones especially you know your apple watches your apple phones apple laptops the minerals and the stuff that they need to make this pro um, pro um, products come from congo and mostly the people that are mining all of these stuff are young children like there's a lot of foundations and there's a lot of um, petitions and news articles that you can read about the story and what's happening in Congo right now and you know people be like oh yeah well if it's like that why don't they just stop it it's hard because every time a Congolese leader has tried to stop working with like all of these people you know they try to get more profit out of it they try to be like oh no we're taking control of our stuff they get killed because like Congo's always going through a rough time like I have family members there and we, we hear the stories you know, about the leaders, like leaders in Congress are always getting killed. 
you know, always changing up, you know? That if you're not corrupted, and then you, if you're not corrupted, if you either corrupted or for the people trying to make a change, and then you can kill either way. So, like, yeah, you know, it's hard. It's tough out here. But, like, yeah, back to the topic. When they see us, when I finished watching that documentary, I was just like, yo, it changed. It shook me to the core. And then after I finished watching it, I had a it to my parents, and it also shook them to the core as well. And they were like, damn. Another good um, documentary to watch based on, like, you know, supporting people of color and black people, the Black Lives um, Black Life Matter movement. Watch um, the story of Centoya, uh, Centoya Brown on Centoya Brown on his face as well. She, like, she was so sad what happened to her. She shouldn't have been tried as an adult. She shouldn't have gone to, like, prison. She was basically defending herself. But, like, you know, that's just how the system is against us, people of color, black people. It's messed up. Like, the justice system was never for us. It was never meant for us. They see us really, like, shook me to the core. Uh, it made me so frustrated with the, like, that like, I, um, like the police is so scared even my sister she's three years old whenever she hears a police side and outside or anything about see the police coming through the like the flat she runs away scared for her life because she knows that the police are the bad men if you ask her daliva even answer daliva are police good or bad she'll say bad like i'll ask daliva are police good she'll say are the police bad yes See, look, even children, they get scared of policemen because that's how much injustice that they do to the, the people who are supposed to protect you are the ones that are actually killing you all the time. And then they don't get charged for it. Like, look at this. Breonna Taylor was killed in her sleep at home. They passed a law in her name, but they didn't even arrest the killers. Like, what is that? Is that basically you're going to a hospital, the doctor acknowledging that you have a broken bone? But then she does. She she acknowledges that you have a broken bone, but she doesn't take action. She's like, okay, I'll just put a patch on you. You can go. Like my bones is broken. Aren't you gonna operate? You're supposed to fix some situation. Just putting a a patch over it, putting a law about it, isn't gonna change the fact that you do injustice. You need to erase the people that killed her. You know. And then like it is true. I see a lot of people taking advantage. Like you know, doing this dancing TikTok, and then at the end they're like. Arrest Breonna Taylor's um, uh, assault, uh, like murder, or something like a justice for Breonna Taylor, or like these celebrities will like post a nude photograph and they'll be like, now that my boots got your attention, the the officers that killed Breonna Taylor, like what are you doing? Like have the same respect that we had for George Floyd, the same way that you should respect Breonna Taylor's case, because like that's so sad, that's messed up. But like yeah. Also, like another good documentary, is thirteen. It just shows you. Also, the Innocence Project. Wow, I still have to get to that one, but so many people have said it's nice. And Brian, Brian. I think it's the. It's called Brian Powers. It's it's a case about this guy who was um this black the black guy who was invicted of a crime. Basically, this girl said that he raped her. And he went to prison for six years. And he he would have he was supposed to play the NFL. So he made he was falsely accused. He lost his contract, lost his scholarship, went to prison for six years. And then when he came out, he was doing everything in his power to get this lady to tell the truth. Like imagine when she came out and said it was a lie, he didn't date me. Six years of his life he was gone. He he basically grew up in the prison system. Like, how is he going to recuperate that six years? Like, you know, I feel like those women who falsely, um, uh, falsely accuse people of rape, they should be charged as well. They should go to prison to get the 100%. Because you're basically taking away somebody's life. Like, imagine if you were so depressed because he was going to commit suicide. But luckily for him, he had a mentor in prison that was helping him out so much that he survived because he's going about taking his own life like imagine taking your own life for knowing that you didn't commit the crime that people told you about like imagine being accused be, like being a rapist like the same way um when they see us they were accused of a crime that they didn't commit 
there was no evidence that implemented that it was them all the evidence were telling him that it was innocent and then the police coerced them into like saying that he did it so you see I just messed up you guys need to watch when this year's 13 and then the other one is the caliph brodo like i haven't watched to be honest i haven't watched a documentary yet i'm building up because i know i'm not ready to watch the documentary the way that when they see us shook me to the core and it changed my life like i know caliph brodo is going to just freak me even more because so many people on twitter when they talk about watching the documentary they said you will be traumatized you it will change your life because what he went through in prison wasn't right like he went to prison for nothing they accused him of stealing a bag at a a fair a fun fair based amusement park a bag but he always ever since the beginning until the end he stuck with his story saying i didn't take the bag the bag is not mine i didn't take anything he was put into a prison for i don't know how many years i forgot i think three years it was three years he didn't have a sentence to his name he was basically just there he wasn't prosecuted not nothing just in prison he was um violated he was attacked and then when he came out uh, you know they were going easy on him and his mom even jay-z got on you know they helped him to prosecute the the people the police department basically the people who put him in prison for crime he didn't commit and then he ended up committing suicide because he couldn't take it like everything that happened to him all of the pressure like everything he went through he couldn't take it and he committed suicide and like imagine like you see like that's so sad like that's messed up so just by hearing the story alone it's so brutal so like watching the documentary oh my gosh it's just i know i'm gonna cry because i cry a lot <laughs> even watching cartoons like you know animated movies i cry and i'm always like you why are you crying so much what's wrong with you always crying i was like it's sad mom yes it's a cartoon but it's sad like the, the part was wholesome but like yeah that's another documentary that you should watch you know to help the black lives don't stop spreading the word don't stop you know sharing on your stories signing petitions please sign those petitions signing petitions has helped so much because once um the amount that the per the person that said the petition gets reached it basically they have to acknowledge it the government i don't care whoever did the crime they have to acknowledge it like okay look this amount of people all over the world they want to see a change we have to act on this otherwise we are gonna be look like the fool we are gonna be the bad guys even though they are the bad guys you know so like yeah it's like so bad and then you know people are out there protesting peacefully and then like it's so sad watching one of those videos people are just you know singing celebrating you know embracing the blackness the culture and then you see all of these storm to um stormtroopers policemen coming here with full shields and everything it's supposed to be a peaceful protest what are you doing there trying with your guns trying to intimidate people and then running people over shooting them with um rubber bullets which in fact aren't rubber bullets they're actually black real bullet metal bullets wrapped around rubber my mom has been shot with one on her leg she has like an indentation i don't know like you know yeah and there was a war time she was basically here and she says those stuff hurt it's not a joke it hurts like really hard i didn't even know my i remember my friend alicia whitman back in south africa she grew up in a neighborhood that also had like a lot of gang violence and the one time she was in the park and the police came and they started shooting firing rubber bullets and so she was scared so she ran she was running to go home and when she got hit by the leg was a rubber bullet and she told me that stuff hurt it hurts you really bad so like yeah it's just sad what's going on but please inform yourself you know if you're a person if you're a white person please acknowledge your white privilege it's so frustrating when a white person you see a white person that's so ignorant of the privilege that you have like use your privilege for good and i love those videos where i see white people actually standing up for black people when they see something is done wrong why are you treating her differently you should you should be treating her the same way that you're treating me like this old guy he saw a bunch of um he three black dudes and a grand uh, grandfather getting arrested on side of the street and he pulled up with his crew was like excuse me officer 
it's coronavirus time where is your mask why are you arresting these young men oh no they're suspected of we we got the call um suspecting robbery do these people look like they they done it then he asked excuse me sir this old guy have you committed the crime said no i haven't done anything and he was like you you um analyze this man right now let him go and you see he was using his white privilege for good they let the people go and he was like if you any of you get coronavirus you sue this police department because these officers aren't wearing their mask they you see using your white privilege for good so embrace you know don't be ashamed you know it's a sad thing but you know those people who like to be gay you know i don't i don't like the white privilege like it doesn't matter if you like it or not embrace it and use it for good you know because like it's so sad when have those oh no i hate seeing those those comments on twitter or like people are like oh no but every time a black person gets arrested for like completely nothing or is that that white person oh well what happened what's the full story why do you need the full story sir when it's a white person that gets arrested oh no you know he was just going through some mental issues he was sick but then when it comes a black man look at this thug they always like to put the nastiest photograph ever when it's a white person they put the most sympathetic oh look at him at his college days photograph but then when it's a black person they want to take a photograph of maybe when the person was in a gang or oh, one with a mark shot of window where he said one time like you see and then the captions the titles are always so unjust as this black gangster accused of a crime and then you have oh, for the white person oh this sick mental, mentally ill boy raped a person like oh my gosh you know white privilege is a thing it exists people acknowledge it you know don't just sit there quivering on yourself or no use it for good in this world use it for good don't be those other people like oh i don't see color girl you see color you must be colorblind otherwise but, oh no i don't see i don't like people when they say that i don't see color so when you see color you don't acknowledge us there you go so that's another thing the seventh thing is doing the most i can to fight injustice and also my black people support your brothers and sisters in business on twitter i retweet so much like i retweet so much black owned businesses you know these white businesses they don't care about us they only care about the money so many times they do racist stuff they come up with racist pro um, products you know then they come up with apologies you know people brands getting cancelled left and right you know cancel culture in itself it just talks it and it's messed up because the person's cancelled for like three five days or maybe one week two week a month and then boom all of a sudden they blast me again so support your brothers and sisters and don't ask for discounts the way you support somebody a business is by paying full price because that way you profiting the business you're helping the person grow yeah that's what you do so please support your brothers and sisters black folks you know power to the people black lives matter black lives do matter indeed black lives matter and it will always matter today tomorrow every day of the year every day of the month okay thank you people so that's an 87 um what's something else I think my stuff is getting cold i don't even want to eat my brain anymore um what else so i already have seven things so far i think that's it i think that's it that's all what that I, th I can think about right now on the top of my head all these seven stuff so like yeah no <sighs> let me start opening this hair of mine i can only think of like seven things right now but like yeah guys please feel free do be sure to you know comment down below comment down when I say you want to say hi to the viewers, this is my sister Dariva who said, Dariva, huh? are police say mal? What is mom? <laughs> is the police bad? Yeah. You see, look, she said, mm-hmm. Are you scared of the police? You scared? Mm -hmm. Page me the police. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You see, look, she said she's scared of the police. Ah. Poor baby, don't worry, okay? What you are beautiful I, black girl. I'm your skin girl. 
bacon just like pudding. You want bread? You want bread? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can take it, but you have to go eat in the lunch. Mana is making a video. Mm -hmm. Becky, live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't tell that. That's the magic word? Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Santa, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go on. She's at the bank eating. Like, yeah. What about you? Apple. 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 O bem bebê daí depois vai na mana. Mana vai te dar banho. Deixa eu assistir da tua puta de chá, pessoal. Let's see. I'm just gonna be opening my hair in the meantime. You know, I have the left up here. I'm gonna open up. Oh, yeah. Number 8 of the whole. Oh, my gosh. So, number 8 of the whole. Pretty pie. The eighth thing, I think the eighth and last thing is that okay, this child is a bank. I need to make a cameo in the video. But the eighth thing about this that's good about this quarantine is that uh, I get more time, free time to myself. You know, I get to watch my favorite YouTubers. You know, get to catch up, um, catch up on Pretty Pie because like I really love Pretty Pie. But I remember when I was like, at school and everything. I didn't really have time to just sit down and watch his videos but now I do I have so much time to catch up on everybody's videos and like you know watch series on Netflix and that's oh, that's amazing that's nice I really like that so yeah I'm just gonna finish opening this here my off camera and then once I'm all done let's comb the legs I'll pop in here to show you how it looks how big my hair is and then I'll do an outro for this video but like yeah until then get a whole load of this also that whole Vogue thing the whole Vogue issue that they did with um, Simone Biles is just that was just so sad they 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 were they did so bad on they Vogue. like they didn't make her look human her skin looks so ashy the lightning was bad like you know all these these people be doing this on purpose like mm -mm. you know play with black females like that no black goddesses you know pe beautiful people like mm -mm. they did her so bad like if you look at the photographs that they did compared to her instagram feed her instagram feed is so much better than that whole article that they did with her it's just crap but you know what i'm just gonna reappear later on so i'm so of mine just like yes it's so crazy the thing that I chopped my hair not too long ago and now it's back to this look at my hair here's the finished results as you can see you know that that nicely comb because like it's dirty and I have to wash it but I'm gonna wash it tomorrow but look at all this hair it's crazy this thing that I did like a chop not too long ago you can have something to like hide let me just use this in a moment should I pull something it's been so long since I've done this See, we black girls have to tie our hair this way because our hair grows up, uh, grows upwards and not downwards. So, to push it up, can you see how big my hair is? I remember I used to do this every morning to go to school, not every morning, but like. Majority of my school memories. Voila, and 
then it just had like the laces so I mean like this And you fluff it out a bit. Oh, you know, it's not a bit. Do a baby oil if you want to, but I don't really. Key of charm there. How many could we do this? I don't think we all need to put baby hair because that's like exaggeration. But like, yeah. Look at how big my hair has gone. Going natural was the best decision ever when I stopped relaxing. Oh, I just loved it. But anyway, I hope you liked today's video. Today's video, we talked about Good Vibes 2020 edition, which was inspired by Cory Kenshin. But I did my own little twist to it. And to recap, I talked about eight way points. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm making a video on the river. Why? Fresh up water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe down below. Don't forget to turn on your notification button. You'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And also, don't forget to comment down below your 20, your good vibes 2020 edition. And I'll see you next time. Bye.